Question one says the temperature of a gold bar rises by 10 degrees Celsius when it absorbs 0 0.677 kilojoules of energy by heat. The mass of the bar is 525 grams. Determine the specific heat of gold from these data. So what we'll do is we'll start off by this uh, concept of Q. So uh, Q is equal to the the energy, so it's it's equal to, and I put an H, it's equal to the energy transferred by heat. So energy can be transferred a couple of ways. It can be transferred um, by uh, kinetic movement or by, by a, a, a physical force. It can be transferred by um, the movement of electrons. It can be transferred by heat. And so Q is equal to the energy that is transferred by heat. And so when you have an enclosed system, if we, if we say that this is a cup of some kind with a lid on it, and in this system we have, we have a liquid, um, we'll, we'll say that there's a, a liquid in here, and, and this liquid is a, is a certain temperature, so it's uh, the white tea, and then we have this gold in here, and it's, it's another temperature, yellow tea, and so whatever whatever the temperature of of the white is, if it's colder, let's uh, let's change that to a white C. If it's colder, then the the temperature of the yellow C is warmer. Then there's going to be a heat flow in that direction. But the total energy in the total energy in the box, so in, in the cup rather. The total energy in here is not going to change. So the change, the transfer of energy in here is going to net out to be zero. So what we can say is that, that the cha transfer of energy from the gold plus the transfer of energy into the water, so transfer, en transfer of energy from gold is a, is a loss of energy, so it's a negative amount. The transfer of energy into the water is a gain of energy, so it's a positive amount, so it's going to net out to be zero inside of this system. So th there's actually a loss here, a gain here, so there's a, a negative and a positive, but inside of the entire system, it's going to be zero. Now this is assuming that no energy is being allowed to escape from this this jar, this cup. If uh, and to the degree that energy can escape, there will be a slight change, but it, it's not due to uh, to anything going on in here. It's due to the failure to insulate. So um, if we had a perfect insulator, though, this is always going to be zero. And so how do we figure out what Q is? So Q, the amount of energy transferred by heat, is, is, uh, it is proportionate. It is proportionate to the mass of the material and the change of temperature. So the amount of energy transferred by heat is proportionate to the change of temperature. And it's also proportionate to the mass. So you can, you can imagine if we have a little piece of gold, it can't, if it was all 100 degrees, it's going to have less energy than if we had this big piece of gold that was 100 degrees. And likewise, if we had another piece of gold the same size and it was at 200 degrees, it would also have more energy. So it is the, the, the mass, the, the energy transferred by an object, it is proportionate to the mass and the temperature. So that proportionality constant is called the specific heat capacity. So the amount of energy transferred is the specific heat capacity times the mass times the change of temperature. Now usually the, the mass is put in front of the specific heat in this equation, so it's usually Q equals MC change of T. Now do, do not get this C. This is not the speed of light as in, as in the equation E equals MC squared. Uh, different C right here. This C is the specific heat capacity. And so in our problem, it's saying that we have, in this system, we have some substance, we don't know what it is. Some substance is transferring heat into gold. So it's transferring heat, and the amount of heat it transfers is, is Q. And then gold is receiving that heat. So the gold is receiving that heat, and so gold receives, uh, receives Q. So we'd call this Q1, and we'd call this one Q2. 
And in our problem, it tells us what Q1 is. It tells us that it's 0 0.677 kilojoules. Now, if Q, we say, we'll say Q2, we know that, that the gold received the energy, so we'll just keep it in front so it stays positive. Q2 plus Q1 equals 0. Uh, and the reason I'm, by the way, the reason I'm keeping the Q2 in front here is because whenever we subtract over Q1, um, it'll be uh, Q2 equals negative Q1. It'll allow my Q2 to stay positive. Uh, and that keeps me from just having a negative fraction divided by a negative. So it, it's going to equal positive either way. So we go ahead and solve this. We know that, that, uh, that Q2 equals negative Q1. And then we substitute in our, our equation for Q into Q2. We, we don't need to substitute any, anything in for Q1 because we already know what Q1 equals. We'll, we'll substitute this number in for Q1. So this equation goes into Q2. So the mass of gold times the specific heat of gold times the change of temperature of gold is going to equal Q1. And so we know what the mass is, we know what the temperature change is, we don't know the specific heat, so we're going to divide over both the mass and the change of temperature, so we get that the, the specific heat of gold is equal to Q1 over the mass of gold times the change of temperature of gold. And so I just put in my numbers, the, the um, specific heat of gold is going to equal 0 0.677 kilojoules divided by 525, gra 525 grams times 10 degrees Celsius. Or because the change of Celsius equals the change of Kelvin, this could also be 10 Kelvin if we would like it to be. Now the problem actually wants the answer in kilojoules per kilogram. And so we gotta we gotta change our 525 to kilograms. And so the the way we would do that is we would just say that 0 0.677 kilojoules over 525 grams times times 10 degrees Celsius. And so if we put one uh, if we put our gram units on top and our in our kilograms on bottom, then they're going to cancel out. So 1,000 grams, 1 kilogram, that equals the same. So we're going to multiply the top by 1,000. And your answer should be approximately 0 0.129 uh, kilogram, or kilojoules per kilogram Celsius, 0 0.129 being the answer. Uh, one thing I want to, uh, I want to explain before I go on, um, the reason, this is a positive number, so uh, what we ended up with was um, negative Q, and so we know that negative, we know that Q, uh, Q1 was a loss of, of heat, so because Q2 absorbed 6, 0.677 kilojoules, we know that Q1, so if we say Q2 plus Q1 equals 0, and then Q2 Q2 equals 0 0.677, then Q1 has to equal negative 0 0.677, and so whenever we do negative of a negative number, it comes out positive. And so the one thing where one place where I was slightly ambiguous is right right there. I, I need to put the negative sign in right there, um, and so that is uh, that that was slightly ambiguous. So the negative of negative 0 0.677 is positive 6 point, 0.677. Simple math. Now because I feel like that was a little bit convoluted, I want to recap the entire problem. If you don't want to watch it, that's fine. I'm going to recap. So we can say that in a, an enclosed system, the transfers of any amounts of heat is going to equal zero. So in our specific uh, system. We only had two transferable uh, heats, uh, and so um, the transfer uh, to gold and the transfer into so the transfer out of one object and the transfer into gold it has to equal the exact same because of the law of conservation of energy. So. 
um, we can say that we can solve for our, our unknown. So Q1 equals negative Q2, our unknown being a term within Q1, the term being the specific heat of gold. And so we can substitute in our definitions. So the definition of Q is the mass times the specific heat times the change of temperature. And so we can substitute in, so mass of gold, specific heat of gold, change of the temperature of gold is going to equal negative Q2. So in the problem it says that it says that Q1, it tells us what Q1 equals, it says that Q1, this, the change of heat of gold was 0 0.677. And so if Q1 equals negative Q2, we can say that, that 0 0.677 equals negative Q2. And so Q2 equals negative 0 0.677. And so we can plug in our value for Q2 uh, after, after we solve for our, our equation symbolically. So we would solve for the specific heat, and we would say that the specific heat of gold is equal to negative Q2 divided by mass of gold times the change of temperature of gold. And then we plug in all of our values. So negative, so the specific heat of gold equals equals the negative of negative 0 0.677 divided by 525 grams times 10 degrees Celsius. Now, the only thing left to do is to convert your unit into kilograms, which is what the, what the problem asks for. Know that the top is in kilojoules already. And that is the recap of how you solve this problem.